All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Minehead. The good news is we're out fishing. The bad news is it's the start of March. Heading up the west coast in the morning to find a place where no one knows our faces or our names. If we don't leave now, we might never make it out alive. Plans are changing, rearranging all the time. So come. Look at that bad boy. That is beautiful. Welcome back to mine, Ed. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My bait's everywhere. A bit like me, all over the place. No, I'm not, I'm good. How are you? To be honest, we could do with a few more fish, couldn't we? But we're out fishing. Right, today I am back down fishing mine, Ed, as you can see. I'll put the drone up, I'll fly it around so you know where I am. I'm out on the sand. Last time I was here, it was a massive tide and it went right out. This is pretty much low water now, but as you can see, like I've just said, I'm down on the sand. The plan is to fish an hour back, three hours back, up onto these ankle breakers. As you know, I'll get the drone up, I'll fly the drone across. If you didn't watch my last video, as I said before, they're level eight out of 10 for ankle breakers. So only come down here if you are fit and you've got appropriate footwear. Naturally, when you're on the sand like now, it's beautiful, but unless you've got a helicopter or you want to paddle board around, don't do that in this tide, by the way, then you've got to get across. So don't do it unless you're fit. Back to the bait. Peter crab, frozen. As I've said, and if you've watched my videos over the last few weeks, it's pretty hard. So you can blame me at the end if I blank and say, Wayne, you should have got fresh bait, but I haven't. But I've got some frozen pita crabs. I've got some frozen black lug. I've got more frozen peelers, which I only froze last week. So they're fresh frozen. I've got some squid. My favorite bait of all time. And I've got some joeys. Rigwise. Ready? Groundhog day. Um, today is an 11 meter tide. So for a lot of you, that's really big. But for the Bristol channel, it's pretty run of the mill. But I still need to pin my bait to the bottom. So I can't use any rolling leads. I can't use any pretty ones, because as you've seen before, it's like chocolate, but just not very nice chocolate. Um, so yeah, it doesn't matter if I put an aluminous yellow lead out there, they're not gonna see it. So today I need to be using, or when you fish the Bristol channel, you need to use a grip lead. So I have a seven ounce grip lead, like so, to a splash down to hold my bait and my hooks in place for when I cast. I think you know about that by now, but it keeps it all aerodynamic. I clip my hook into there, and when it hits the water, it pops out and releases the bait. To a 120 pound rig body, to a bead, a putty bead, a bead, to a swivel, to a 90 pound hook length. I've just caught a squid, well done. To a 4-0 circle and a 4-0 J hook and a squid. I'm not blanking everyone. And that is it. Pretty standard. My go-to rig for the Bristol Channel. Just straightforward really. Naturally today, I'm targeting rays. If I was fishing the English Channel or somewhere nice, <laughs> not like this, I'd be using it up and over to give me plenty of movement to allow the rays to come along, settle, nail it, hook them correctly and get them in. On the Bristol Channel, with a 13, 14 meter tide, snaggy ground, just a four or a five foot pulley for me, 
five foot maximum does the job. But look, I'm gonna keep fishing. When I bring you back, I'll do some baiting up, but hopefully we can get a few bites. I've said it two or three times now. I really appreciate you sticking by me in the hard months. I've got loads planned. When the fishing picks up across Chesil, we go every week again. When the fishing picks up here, I'll come every week. And my aims are to get around the country, over to Norway, come and visit some of you guys. I've said it before and I've done a post. If you've got a YouTube channel and you want me to come up and fish for you, give me a shout. And if you do a lot of fishing and you enjoy watching my videos and you've got a nice couple of marks that we can fish without giving too much away or upsetting the locals, the last thing I want to do is make enemies. It's hard enough in life to get on with people anyway, as you all know yourselves, because you're all human. Well, most of you are. But the plan is to get out and around and catch loads of fish and hopefully help you with your fishing and give you the inspiration to get out. As I've said over and over, I know some of you are not capable of getting out fishing. Some of you don't even like going fishing. You just enjoy watching it. So this is for you as well. Thanks everyone. I'll keep fishing. And one of these days I'm gonna bring you back and we're gonna have a bite. <laughs> yeah, the rod is gonna move like this and I'm going to wind in a fish for us. Wish me luck. Back to the fishing. So what I'm going to do now is bait up a double squid using my bait needle for support. Bait elastic. For me, I know I've said it before, squid is my favourite bait. Everything eats squid, even we do. I quite like squid, it's nice. That's what I'm gonna do. Plenty of elastic, plenty of juice. I know I've done it before and I've shown you over and over, but what I like to do is use bait elastic, come in from the ends to keep all the juice inside. If you go from the head down, it's like you're squeezing all the juice out. What I like to do, bottom, because I've got one squid one way, one the other, because I'm using a double, then got the other end, and then it kind of leaves like a ball in the middle with all the juice. Naturally today, it doesn't matter if I'm only fishing 40, 50 yards, 60, 70 yards, so I don't really need it overly streamlined. If you're fishing chisel and you're after blom rays, or you're fishing locations where you need to absolutely bang it, then you probably wouldn't worry about all the juice. You've probably cut a squid in half and bind it up really tight, making it look like a sand eel maybe, that sort of size bait. But today, I've got a big 11 metre tide ripping through. I want to get as much juice out there as I can. So anyway, here we go. So that's double squid. As you can see, all that juice in there, looking good, eh? Right, one, two, round your finger, once, twice, tie it off. Little package. So the area I'm fishing, it fishes better about half an hour after low for about two, two and a half hours. So we've got a chance. Bottom hook, through your squid, like all. Sorry if you've seen this before, but it's a fishing video. What I'm going to do, now I add more elastic. I'm sure you can see that. So, around the end. Naturally, don't mass a hook. You know that by now. What you do, come all the way along. Five or six turns around the eye of the hook. The last thing you want is that hook to be able to turn inside. Because it's US, useless. So make sure you elasticate the shank of the hook. Now that hook won't move that. I can't move that hook. And then what I do, always remember to be gentle with your elastic. You're not sort of, you know, just gently put it on. Because look, look at that juice. If I wound really hard on there, it would snap. Then what I do as before, once, two, three, 
through the loop. One, two, tie it off. Bum, bada, bum. Then I slide my pedal hook down with my magic tube in for resistance. Just tuck it through. Right. I'm not worried about being overly streamlined, but what I'm going to do is just nip that to square it up. Remember, don't cut the line. I've done that before. And there you go. Remember, your circle hook has got to be loud and proud. Because that is a hook that's going to do the damage. But look, there's a squid bait or a double squid bait on a pulley panel here in mine head. On this one, I had a whole joey. I'm not at an indication or anything. I'm just going to change the bait. It's been out there about an hour. Not even a dogfish, he's saying. Just got to keep it going out here. Or get stuck in the... Prime example, don't stop. Oh, oh man. Stuck in... Done all right, yeah. I got it going. Oh, uh. I'll have to walk it back. Hopefully, as I said in the intro, my hook bends out. Bit of weed. I can see it out there. I'm changing the baits anyway. Oh. Uh. I keep it rolling just in case we've got a fish as well, but it looks like it's just weed. The weed's gone. Still feel a bit of weight. Could be a dogfish or something. Could we have a fish? I don't think we have. Welcome back. Oh yeah, for a laugh, it's raining. As you can see, we're back up on the rocks now. We're only about an hour after low, but because it's not a massive tide, probably does like an hour either side of low on the sand. So I'm probably only going to get another hour. Don't worry though, the excitement continues, believe it or not. And what I am going to do is move up to a high water mark. I'm not sure where to go yet. I'll probably go up behind the lifeboat centre. I've done two videos there before. It's a nice mark. You know where I parked the van? Virtually fish from the van. Or I might go up to Golf Links, a little bit further up. Or I might even go back to watch it, I'm not sure yet. But don't worry. The fun doesn't stop here. <laughs> Unbelievable, eh? So on the left hand one, I've got squid, about 40 yards. And on the right hand one, I've belted it. I've got a bit of um, weed on this one. I can see it. Squid on both. Over low, I like to fish with just fish baits out here. Because you've got a chance of a nice ray. When I move up there and I fish over high, 
I'll put some pilos out and some frozen blacks. The rain's nice. It's about three o'clock now. Low water was half one. High water's into darkness, half seven. So who knows? Probably fish up till high, give it an hour over the top, and then go and get some food, go home. Pretty simple, me. Pretty simple life. Go to work, come out fishing, do family things, eat food. Anyway. Cheers everyone, I hope you're still watching. Hope you're still awake. Although I've got weed on this one, I did have a couple of little head shakes just a minute ago. And I could have a fish. I know I've got weed. Might have a dog. Or something hanging on. I'm gonna keep it going out there. I did lose a set earlier. Someone's gonna walk along here, find a nice set. Ready to go. I think I've got a fish on as well, eh? Definitely got weed, I can see it. Oh, I got a fish as well. <sighs> Are we blanking, son? <sighs> Hopefully underneath this weed. More weed, it's a good sight. Oh yeah, I got a ray. Beauty! Oh yes. What have we got? Oh, it might be a dog. Oh, oh. oh no. Unfortunately, it was a tail whip in the water. I thought it was the side of a ray. It's a bloody dog, mate. I'm losing the plot. I've gone delirious. I'm tripping out. I thought I had a ray. Oh, never mind. It's all right, though. Guess what? We're not blanking. We're out fishing. I caught a fish, he's absolutely nailed that. Well, there you go. That, everyone, is a dogfish. Thanks, Mr. Dogfish. We're not blanking, I'll sort you out. I'll get another bait in the water. Oh, I thought I was a ray then. You know, when you're bringing it in and the tail whipped, I thought it was the side of a ray. I'm not going to belt it off of here. 
there's too much weed out there at the moment so I'm just gonna sort of little little flick still not tied as I said there's quite a lot of weed The rain's horrible, it's freezing, but we're having a go. That's the main thing, hey? Just had a bite on the left arm rod. Might be a dog, but it's a bite and it's absolutely slamming down so the rod just went back oh so i've dropped them in short for now it's definitely a bite Freezing. Look at me, I'm soaked. Yep, there's a bite there. That looked more ray. Go on. Definitely a bite. Could it be a ray? These rocks are lethal. Oh. I've got studs on as well. Sometimes it doesn't help on big shiny wet rocks, I've got to say. But look, I'm going to bring this one in. That's two and a half, almost three hours now from low, and it just hasn't happened. And what I'm going to do is, I might have a dog on here. I might have a reef. It's coming then. So good, is it? There you go. Could have a dog on here, everyone. Feels doggy. What I might do is take you back up there and fish over high, but it keeps raining. As you've seen, it's not fishing that great, but we've had a couple of fish, so it's been all right. We'll just see how it goes. Go and get a cup of tea somewhere or a hot chocolate and reevaluate my life. You know how that goes. Oh, I've got a fish. What have we got? Oh my god. Now that is a tiny doggy. Oh my god. That is pathetic. Still a fisher. Ugh. This is nuts. <laughs> Look at that bad boy. That is beautiful. Even though it's a doggy, but what a nice fish. Ooh. Just checking it's not a hus. Yeah, it's a dogfish. But look, that's fishing. That is the end of the session. What I might do is take you back along there and fish over high. If I don't come back, I'm fine. I've just decided to go and get a cup of tea and not come back out. The weather is horrible. It's not fish that great, but we've had three dogfish. And we've been out fishing. Thanks everyone. I'll probably see you back there for high. If not, I'll see you next week somewhere else. Take care, look after yourself. Cheers, Mr. Doggy. That's fishing. See you in a bit. <laughs>